Hi friends, welcome to the Scapegoat Club. My name is Chess. I'm a therapist and a coach and the survivor of a really difficult toxic family. And this video I'm going to talk about the do's and don'ts of estrangement. So stick around for the next few minutes and let's talk about it. Hi friends, welcome. If you're new here, hi, my name's Chess. I'm a therapist, I'm a coach, and I talk a lot about estrangement. So whether you're trying to get your head around what this estrangement thing is versus something like alienation, then this video should help. And if you're considering whether estrangement is the right decision for you, whether you're looking at it or you have done it, hopefully these items should help with that decision. So let's get into it. Number one, do make your personal health, physical and mental and emotional health your number one priority. So if you are or have been under physical attack, duress, if you are concerned for your physical safety, then please do what you need to do to keep yourself safe. If you are emotionally or mentally suffering around a relationship, if you're considering self-harming, potentially trying to end your own life, again, incredibly serious. Please, please reach out for help, look for support, talk to a professional. I'm also gonna add to this list that if you do have medical or, or psychological symptoms that are ongoing that you are seeking professional help for as a result of this relationship or a difficult relationship, then do think very carefully about whether it's in your best interests to continue or if you are going to continue under what criteria and what safety measures you need to have in place to be able to continue. So on the other side of that number two is don't estrange from a relationship if you are doing it for reasons of revenge or spite and wanting to hurt another person. This actually isn't estrangement. This comes under alienation where we're trying to weaponize our contact with another person, weaponize the relationship to try to hurt them. It's not nice, first of all. It, it's a really not a good way to go about life and be a decent human being. Also, acting out of revenge, out of having angry thoughts, having a lot of rage or bad intention towards another person is really bad for us as well. It can sit in our systems, it can affect, affect our mental and physical well-being as well. So in this situation, please think about other ways and what might be best for you and everybody else in the long run. Number three on estrangement, do take long-term patterns of a relationship seriously. If you have concerns about the relationship, that it's been difficult, harmful, abuseful, or neglecting, neglectful, neglecting, neglectful for a long time, then take that seriously. Unfortunately, we can't change other people. We can only change ourselves. And if and it's hard for people to change. And if they don't see the need to change, that's even harder. And so if you've been dealing with something for a very, very long time, and it is weighing on you and causing you a lot of problems, then again, think about that very carefully. Think about the likelihood that it will change compared to the need you have for it to change. If it's unlikely to change and you really need it to, then again, you need to think carefully about whether staying in this relationship is a good idea. Number four, don't make a snap decision on estrangement. The, my only caveat for that is if, again, if you're in very, very serious harm, then you might need to do what you need to do to get away. But in my experience, I don't think that this tends to happen out of the blue. I think that 
there are a lot of signs, there's a lot of patterns before we get to a true estrangement situation. So if you have had a difficult time with someone, if you've had a big argument and but it's not normal, if someone's made a really bad decision and it's again it's not it's it's hard for you but it's not something that has been the writing's been on the wall for a long time then i like the idea of acting with a little bit of craze and not not being knee-jerk and considering whether there is room for a little bit of leeway in terms of giving them the benefit of the doubt or seeing if if things might change over time not months, years, decades, but understanding that relationships aren't perfect and giving people some benefit of the doubt over making a not so great decision every once in a while. Number five, I think, is do communicate your concerns clearly if you can. Again, there's probably a couple of exceptions to the rule, but for a lot of situations, if it's a long time coming and it is a very close relationship to you, I do like the idea of, of giving like one last shot and, and often writing things down, sending a letter, putting it in an email if you need, but probably something a bit more formal than a text message saying, these are my concerns. And I'm very serious about this because I'm really evaluating our relationship right now. Writing it down also takes some of the emotion out of potentially a heated or a difficult conversation. So writing, communicating your concerns to this person about your relationship um, can help them potentially, potentially help them to see that, that the light writing's on the wall and things need to change. Also, if we do get to the point of estranging, then I think it's really important for us and our kind of sense of whether we did the right thing to say, you know what, I tried and I thought about it carefully and I did communicate with them in the best way that I could to say, look, these are my concerns. And when that was ignored or if it's ignored or, or not taken seriously or nothing ever changes, then at least we know that it kind of keeps our, our conscience a little bit kind of clearer from that perspective. So my next don't is don't make excuses for continual bad behavior from somebody else in a way that justifies us staying in a relationship that is harmful, hurtful, abusive, or dangerous for us. There's always going to be a reason why people do what they do. It's rarely black and white, especially with people close to us. We we can see people's vulnerabilities. We know that their history, we know if the person hurting us has been hurt by someone else before, before, before we came along or before our time. It can be very easy for us to excuse other people and let things slide when when we shouldn't, when we need to actually stand up and say this behavior isn't okay. And so my kind of litmus test on this is would you do what they do or what they keep doing? Would you do that to somebody else? And if you wouldn't do it to someone else, then why are they allowed to do it to you? Why is that okay? It could be that that's always been our role. It could be that that's a very long-term relationship dynamic, but it doesn't mean that it's okay. And just because we've endured it, put up with it, lived with it for a certain period of time does not mean that we cannot change things going forwards. Sometimes it means that actually we need to. And I think I'm on number seven. So number seven is do think ahead. And when I mean think ahead, I mean think about can you live the life that you want to live with this relationship with you in your life? Or do you need distance? Sometimes these relationships aren't 
they don't look really bad from the outside but they drag us down um and it's like it's like a slow leak in a boat and we are we are struggling to stay afloat if we have people who are around us who can't support us in terms of living our best lives if they need to insert their ideas their opinions their needs instead of ours and to the point that we really aren't able to do what we want to do and need to do to be able to live our life in a reasonable healthy and to the, the best ability that we can we all have we all have a right to that Hopefully we can do it with the, the important people around us. But we need to really think about that. And if we can't, then maybe it's time to reassess the situation. Number eight, when we are looking forwards, don't dwell on the things that might be difficult that we might miss. Don't think about Christmas, birthdays, big events, weddings, family gatherings. If you do decide, and if you're watching this and you're really thinking that estrangement is a, a, a very viable option for you, then yes, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a really difficult decision. And, and there will be things that come up that make us test our, our decision. It doesn't mean that it's the wrong decision. It just means that we're having to navigate something that is really hard. The thing is that we make the decision to estrange because staying in the relationship is harder. It's even harder. It's just a different kind of hard. But we're used to certain hardships. We're used to being the, the one that does, you know, looks after the people or is the butt of all the jokes or whatever it is. We're used to playing that role. And it's not easy at all. It's just that it's something that we've grown, grown accustomed to. It's very hard switching that to now we have to put in strong boundaries or really assert our needs or say, no, I'm not going to go to that, even though I wish in another kind of alternate universe, I wish that this weren't happening. So don't look ahead to all the things that you think you're going to miss out on because when we make these big shifts in our lives, if we do, and when, when we do it for the right reasons, then I firmly believe that we end up opening the door to many other opportunities. And it's not so much of what we're losing, but what we're opening ourselves up to in the future. Number nine, if you are looking to estrange, do get support. Hopefully there is someone in your inner circle, close to you, that that you can share your concerns and your intentions with and they can be there to either physically or hopefully even just emotionally help you to say that they understand and they have your back. If it's a case of needing to leave a physically abusive relationship, there are hopefully supports around you, shelters, helplines, social services, things available to help you get back on your feet. There's doctors, there's social workers, there's therapists, and there is the Scapegoat Club. This is one of the reasons that I formed this channel and this is what it's here for. Um, myself and the rest of the community, we, we get it. We don't love it, but we understand how hard it is. And, and for me, this is something that I wish that I'd had when I was going through these really difficult situations. So I hope that you find this helpful. And on that note, please, please join us, Sub subscribe, like the video, share it if you think it's useful. Oh, and um, check out my blog and my website. I do individual coaching. And if this is a really difficult situation for you, I would love to chat and see if I can help in any way. And my last don't on the list is, is when we're looking for support, don't look for it from people who have a hidden agenda. Don't look for it from people who really we know deep down aren't, have got an axe to grind, they've got skin in the game, whatever metaphor we want to use. But basically when when they're not on our side, when they when they want to keep neutral or they actually want to support the other person or the status quo, they aren't the people 
we want to support us. So don't look to them and don't be influenced by people who don't understand your individual situation. There are a lot of ideals out there around what families should look like or what duties certain family members have towards others. Yes, it's nice to be good to our families. It's lovely to have a, a supporting, loving, caring family unit. But when we don't have one, it can get really complicated. And just because people don't understand doesn't mean that you're making a bad decision. So in a lot of ways, I think about estrangement as kind of amputating a, a limb that has an infection. It's not something we ever wanted to do. It can, it can be terrifying. We don't know how we're gonna manage going forwards and we don't want to do it. But also if we keep that, those, that infection, those, that toxins in our body, then ultimately it's going to be more detrimental to us in the long run. And when we've done it, we adjust, we move on. Yeah, we miss, we miss certain things. We have to, we have to adapt, adapt our lives, but for some of us, it is the only decision really that we can make. And we are able to live fulfilling, peaceful, loving lives afterwards. Friends, thank you so much for joining me. It's always an honor and a privilege to, um, to have your support and to talk to you through these things. And I will look forward to seeing you again soon. Please take care. Bye for now.